morning, everybody, and welcome. Welcome to our workshop. And thank you very much for joining us uh, this morning. And I promise you that there will be something that you will be able to take away uh, this morning. All right. So today's topic is about unlock the potential of uh, Microsoft Power Automate. So uh, I, will, I will basically go through like what is Power Automate and what it can do. Okay. And please take note that basically uh, this session, it will be a recorded session. So uh, basically we will record the entire session and it will be available in the YouTube later on at our Cybian YouTube channel. Okay. And of course, if there is any question from you, that basically you can ask uh, your question from the left side panel that basically you can raise your question there. All right. And at the end of the session, that please provide your feedback to us about this session, whether you benefit from it or you have any feedback that you would like to provide to us, please, you are more than welcome to give the feedback to us. Okay. So today is about uh, the, the cost overview will be about uh, Microsoft Power Automate. But before we proceed, allow me to uh, do some self-introduction. So my name is Mike Lim. So I will be your presenter for today. And I'm basically the uh, RPA consultant at Cybian. And I have basically have a several year of uh, you know, automation already. And my purpose as a RPA consultant is to support and to transform uh, businesses through RPA, helping businesses to, to increase their productivity, increase their efficiency, and of course, one of the most important thing is about helping the businesses to make, uh, to generate more money, generate more revenue. Okay, so that will be one of the main purpose as well. And my experience that I basically work with uh, multiple, I mean, various industry and in domain. Most of the time, in helping them in creating the, uh, the RPA strategies, and also to enhance their eff efficiency, and also to drive to drive better result in their organization. And I'm currently presenting Cybian Malaysia office in Kuala Lumpur. Okay. And a little bit about our company. Okay. We are basically a company that, I mean, Cybian basically is a company that help uh, businesses to use their data to win in data economy. And basically in Cybian, we have two major sessions. Okay, section that we have one which is focusing on the education, which is focusing in uh, providing training and everything. And the other part of the trade, the other part of the company, which is focusing in consulting, which focus in the field like RPA, data analytics, IT service manage, management, and etc. etc. So this is where Sabian that we have two, two major sections, which basically helping a uh, company in education, and in the consulting part. So for today, so basically it's a one and a half hour session. So it will be starting from 10 until 11, approximately 11.30. And we have basically two different modules. First is, I mean, first module is about the introduction to RPA and the introduction to the Microsoft Power Automate as well. And after that, we have a short break. And after the break, it will be a two different demo. And of course, after that, there will be a wrap up and a Q&A session. Okay. So basically, this is the overall schedule and we will be, we are, we are kind of flexible with the schedule as well. But generally, this is the, the, the schedule for this one and a half hour workshop. Okay. And about the certification, certificate of attendance that uh, if you are required, then you can request it from us. And in order to, to uh, increase the participation, of course, we encourage you to ask questions along the way. Okay. Also, what is our experience with uh, robotic process automation? That <clears throat> speaking about our experience, we are basically, uh, we Cybian basically is the author of a service automation framework. Basically, the framework that gives individual and organization a deep uh insight about the theory and method about i mean uh service automation 
So we we I mean we own this one and we are the author author for, for this book and this framework as well. All right, then let us come into the main focus for today, which is RPA. What is RPA? Have you heard about RPA? Have you heard about what is that? Have you uh what we heard about what RPA is, but you do not know uh what RPA can do, what it can do, what it cannot do. So let me give you a brief introduction about what is RPA. In your organization, in most of the organization today, uh, it will surely face pressure from many, many uh, sources. It can be from the technology and from a process optimization. It can be a new technology that uh, emerging, incoming. We are talking about the growth of the company in, the, in terms of the, the growth of the, the revenue and are talking about uh, market saturation, about the compliance and regulation. I mean, speaking about outsourcing, some, I mean, some of the tasks to outsourcing to the outsourcing company and you have to manage the customer ex expectation that has been increasing day by day. And of course, the cost pressure as well, the, the increasing of cost and everything from, from every sector that is generally giving the overall cost pressure okay but at the same time the core priority within your organization within, within your business stay the same all right it is always about increase the revenue and to lower down the cost and to improve your customer satisfaction where whereas when they are they are acquiring for you i mean like you're requiring a customer service or anything that it is always about improving customer satisfaction. And really internally, it is about increasing the employee engagement and to reduce the compliance risk. Okay, so this is basically the core priority of uh, the business in the organization that, I mean, you are in right now. Okay. And as the technology evolve, evolving from time to time, that we can see that i mean previous uh, era of the technological disruption that we can see whereas we can see what where would data center without mainframe okay i mean like without mainframe there will there won't be any data center where would the business world be without any personal computer and where would software be without a graphical user interface and where would amazon be or Lazada, I mean, like uh, something in Malaysia that is more common, like uh, I mean, Lazada, Shopee, or anything. Where would this uh, Amazon be without internet? And where would Uber be without a mobile phone? A mobile phone. Or in Malaysia, I mean, we more commonly uh, as Grab. And where would Grab be without a mobile phone? And where would Salesforce be without cloud? All right. And of course, I mean, at least it's to uh, all the technology disruption that come along the way. They're basically changing the how the world it, it is today. It is a transform transformative change along the way. And RPA is also one of it. Okay. So what is robotic process automation? So RPA or I mean robotic process robotic process automation which RPA in short form is basically a technology is a basically a software technology that it allow uh, the, the technology to emulate human action in uh, to mimic the action I mean human in operating any application with user interface which way it allow to mimic human interaction with any software application that you are using in the day-to-day -day business operation and everything so uh like for example your digital uh your crm your your data warehouse or anything that basically is a digital interface that it, the rpa can operate i mean we make the human interaction with that particular application and it can take in the data in a structure format and to perform all the tasks, repetitive tasks, and the business processes in a 
in a very fast way. And of course, for RPA, it's a software that it basically can work continuously for long hour and while maintaining the high accuracy. Okay. So an RPA in general term is basically non-invasive. And what do we what, what do we mean by non-invasive? That basically for your organization to start uh using RPA, it is basically not required any major IT uh architecture change or a deep integration with all your existing underlying system. And it offer a reliable, fast, and cost-effective solution for a lightweight integration into your, your business processes and into your IT asset as well. Okay, and RPA is easy to scale, which means the amount of work that involved by a process can, can be very, and it can change, uh, I mean, as business uh, process, I mean, the process changes are likely to happen in the most of the business uh, environment. And if you were to use an RPA solution, company can easily adapt by scaling up the solution or to scale down the solution, depending on their requirement. And RPA is basically future proof that, which means RPA work with today technology. It can work with the, the latest technology, yet the automation are extensible and able to handle tomorrow technology as well. So the, not just using whatever existing technology, it will be also, I mean, usable in the tech, tomorrow technology, in the future technology as well. And yeah. So what is RPA exactly? So RPA is basically a, is a low to no code commercial off the shelf technology that is basically uh mainly focus in automate repetitive rule based tasks like for example if you are familiar with macro macro is some is something that uh basically automate a lot of uh tasks that you can do within microsoft excel itself so it basically is a is a piece of a, a small piece of program that basically automate whatever you wanted to do so it's the same concept but it can be used as a, at, at a larger scale that you basically can use in your computer to do a lot more tasks compared to macro that can be used within uh, Microsoft Excel, uh, Excel only. Okay. And it can be, I mean, like there are money in the market, there are multiple choices of uh, RPA products, but all of that is focused on one thing which is to emulate human actions, okay? And for today, we will be focusing in uh, Microsoft Power Automate as well. And for the RPA benefits, what are the, what are the benefits that we can get from it? That basically, with the RPA, I mean, like it is, because it's low to no code, some way it's very easy to use, and it can basically empower the non-IT professional. And the process owner can, and, the, and the process owner can basically create an automation into reduce their manual work, which means I mean RPA will not necessarily need to have the IT professional in getting something in getting the automation done. Basically, it empower the the process owner in create the automation for their own task. So this is what uh most of the RPA. Uh, solution is focusing about in making their uh, platform as easy as possible and most of it is basically low to no code which is very easy to use okay and RPA is considered I mean the, the, the it considered transformative simply because it has established a building block of AI and uh, IT infrastructure for the task standardization okay and if you were to uh, have an effective RPA deployment. Basically, I mean, like a lot of things we're talking right now, right? For example, artificial, artificial intelligence and machine learning are just a few manageable way, manageable, manageable step away. Okay. Yeah. I mean, like we can start to incorporate the machine learning and 
uh, artificial intelligence into our business processes already. So sometimes, I mean, like talking about this one, it can be, it can be a very good technology, but a lot of time it's like, yeah, this is a good technology, but I do not know how to implement uh, this technology into my business, where RPA basically is a stepping stone in to incorporate machine learning and artificial intelligence into your business processes as well. And basically, RPA is not just a technology that to reduce uh, workload and to reduce my, uh, the manual task. It basically, it can be used to deploy to increase your work quality, to reduce error, to improve your compliance, to strengthen the environment control, and to add new services into your uh, business as well. Okay. And you can see that it is basically bigger than that when a new technology uh, it come out and it basically is so disruptive that until the end, it basically is a matter of survival for a lot of the company. Like for example, if you look at Amazon, Amazon has been moving into automation. Okay. And Uber or Grab, I mean, like uh, Grab is something that I mean in Malaysia, which is more commonly known that Grab, Uber, they are focused into automation first. Basically, you can get uh, uh, car ride services basically automatically. And Netflix, okay, Netflix is also a movie, a streaming company that basically focus everything into automation first. And you can see that all these businesses are basically thriving today that they are a, a big company that generate tons of revenue okay but whereas for, for the company who are uh, sticking to the traditional way like for example borders the traditional taxi services or the blockbuster or any like uh, uh, a movie rental uh, company or shop they basically they are the, they are in the struggling because they are not moving into automation so we can see that for the automation adopter how their business thrive how their business increase over the years and how are the automation avoider the business who are avoiding automation are currently still struggling with uh, the, the current market all right so with a robot, with RPA, what can it do for you? Okay, basically RPA make it possible to emulate a human in executing uh, a manual repetitive task. Like for example, uh, data entry. It's a very manual way, but I mean without robot, you will probably like, require uh, multiple uh, manpower in handling the data entry job. If you have a, a huge volume in it, that you can imagine how much time you will require to handle all these kind of manual repetitive tasks. And the other example that I can give is about invoice processing. All right, or to generate report. And I can I can I can name a lot more uh example of the manual repetitive tasks. But in general, it is about I mean the RPA is about emulate a person in executing the manual repetitive task. Okay. And it also can make decision. It allow, I mean, the robot can make decision based on the set of rules that is given to the, the robot or the RPA, the bot or the robot, we call it. Okay. And it also can seamlessly integrate into whatever existing application that you are having right now. So it doesn't need to have a new technology or whatever, but basically whatever existing in the uh, application that you are using right now, RPA can sit on top of it and to execute the task. And what can you expect uh, from the RPA? What can you expect from robotic process automation from the robot from the bot? That basically you can expect uh the accelerate benefit from the digital transformation. And you can expect uh, improved compliance, 
at the same time to reduce cost, reduce risk, and at the same time that you are improving customer, your customer experiences. It doesn't matter internal customer or the external customer, but basically in general, it is about improve the customer experience. Imagine that the, the manpower that you are having, you do, do not need to spend their, their hours in uh, the low low quality jobs, right? For example, the data entry, which is manual, so, uh, and it's basically low value. Whereas you can, you can, you can, I mean, like for the business, they can focus on putting their manpower into a higher value job. They basically require human intelligence. And we are leaving all these manual repetitive tasks for, for robot to do and human focus on something that they are meant to be. Okay. And of course, the last uh, outcome that basically you can increase the employee satisfaction and engagement as well. Okay, so this is basically what the automation can do for you. All right. So basically, this is uh, generally about what RPA is about. And next, we are moving into the next module, which is about the introduction to Microsoft Power Automate. Okay, so here I'm going to give a brief introduction about Microsoft Power Automate that you will probably ask, what is Microsoft Power Automate? Okay, so Microsoft Power Automate is basically a service that is provided by Microsoft that allow you to automate action between different applications and services. That if you come, I mean, like, if you come across this name, Microsoft Flow, if you have heard of it before, it is basically the same thing, but basically they rebrand it to Microsoft from Microsoft Flow into Microsoft Power Automate. Okay, so <clears throat> a little bit background about uh, Microsoft uh, Power Automate that speaking about the reputation. Okay, so Microsoft has been named a leader in the 2023 Gartner Magic Quadrant that's I mean, for robotic process automation solution. All right, this is a, a survey that it just uh, came out in August 2023, which is basically still very fresh, that we can see that Microsoft has been named as a leader. And of course, for the first time, they are positioned further for their completeness of vision in the solution. Okay. And also in the uh, Everest Group, uh, Peak matrix, which is also a survey, I mean, an assessment for the RPA solution in the market. Then basically, this is uh, from year 2022. The later, latest one is not out yet. But based on the year 2022, uh, Everest basically named Microsoft a leader and also a star performer in the RPA uh, product. Okay, and uh, or solution we name it. And also in the Another survey, okay, which is a Giga, the 2023 Giga Operator, that basically they recognize Microsoft as a leader in the RPA solution as well. And at the same time, they also rated uh, uh, Microsoft as a fast mover in their solution as well. Okay. So, what Power Automate can enable your organization to do? Okay, first, it can be, it can help to automate repetitive tasks within your organization. Okay, the, the repetitive tasks sometimes we refer as a swivel chair processes. Okay, swivel chair processes means that uh, it is a process that needed to be repeat again and again to get it done. Like, for example, man, manually entering a uh, the same information, same piece of information into multiple systems or the processes that basically uh, it required people to spend more time passing the information from one place to the another, which means they're spending more time passing the information rather than getting the task done. So which means like for example, if something that require approval that it will approve from person A and then pass information to person B and to person C. 
that basically they are spending more time in passing the information in basically getting the task done. All right. The second, which is about integrate in uh integrate various system, we are talking about integrate two or more system together. Sometimes I mean like in the organization we are having uh trouble or having difficulty into I mean like making all the uh solution that you're having. Maybe you have two or more, but you are the trouble having them to work together. Then uh RPE is basically a solution or my power to make can be a solution that to help to integrate the various uh system together that it can able to uh, integrate all the uh, Microsoft solution, like, like for example, Microsoft 365, uh, Microsoft Dynamic 365, and it also allows to integrate into uh, third-party solution, like for example, the ERP solution, you can have uh, like SAP, Oracle, or the uh, CRM solution, Salesforce, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. Or even it can actually integrate into the social media platform as well. Okay, it can integrate into social media platform that basically it allow to integrate into different different kind of solution that you can name it, which is basically possible. And the third one is about streamline business processes, which basically referring to to consolidate and to unify the process. And basically, by consolidate and unify the, the business processes, which uh, it will then result in the overall improve in the efficiency and the productivity, which basically allow uh, the employee to complete their task in a faster way, more quickly, and more effectively. Okay. And also, it is about to improve the accuracy basically automation able to help to improve the overall accuracy imagine that a uh, human you, you are getting a human into the data entry mm -hmm. that we basically can know that the accuracy uh can be getting lower as the day goes by as the time goes by because human uh you will get fatigued you'll get tired the time they will lost focus from time, then basically they make mistake. But for robot, basically it can it can work in a long hour, but at the same time it can maintain the accuracy. So I mean I'm not I mean I'm not making any mistake as human does. Alright. And we also reduce cost. What do we mean by reduce cost? Basically, <clears throat> the cost will be able to reduce by reducing the waste and inefficiency that means that for the business can lower down their operational costs that has been uh, related or associated to the labor costs the material costs and the resource the cost for the resources okay so i mean like whenever you can get things faster basically it's a reduces in cost as well and there are many more, much more advantages that is available. But generally, these are the few that is important, the important point for the business to know about this one, for your organization to know about this one as well. And for Microsoft Power Automate, it is uh, basically a low code to, uh, sometimes they call it no code automation tool, which means, Automation can be, it is basically, uh, you can create your automation in a drag and drop, uh, more like drag and drop, or sometimes we call it a graphical user interface space. So uh, when sometimes we talk about uh, coding and everything to do the programming, we often related to, I mean, like in the older way where we need to do scripting, we need to type a lot of tags, we need to type a lot of code. But for this one, uh, basically is not required to do that that basically everything is basically use your mouse drag and drop and uh, pulling the action into uh whatever action that you want to do 
into the, the platform. Okay. And for Microsoft Power Automate, it is basically available in two different uh, ways. It can, I mean, it's available in web-based and application-based. Application-based, which means that it's an application or it's a software that you are required to install in your PC or in your workstation. And like I mentioned just now, Power Automate is basically a drag and drop interface for the user or the process owner to create or to edit the workflow. And basically, it is also very easy to use that for the user to start creating automation that he or she do not need any coding experience in starting to create automation. Okay. And what are the Microsoft Power Automate capabilities? What are the capabilities that you have? Basically, the Microsoft Power Automate have a very strong API integration and orchestration. The API integration, which means that it can integrate into a lot of uh, third-party solution that the market is having right now. Okay. Yeah. Most of the common application that name it, most of it are available in the API integration. I think the Microsoft Power Automate can easily integrate into the third-party solution without much hassle. Okay. And the second one is about the IDP, or we refer that to as intelligent document processing. That is, that's mean that it can take, it can process all your uh, digital document, whether, I mean, for example, in the uh, image form or in the PDF. PDF we are talking about is whether it's a native PDF or it's a scan uh, PDF or it's an image, I mean, document in the image, in the, in the uh, photo or anything. Basically, IDP is a solution that it can help to process that kind of document. All right. And then it can process it and it can extract all the necessary information for the following these processes. So it's a couple basically it's a capability that it can it can uh, process all the digital documents. Okay. And task mining is basically something uh new that uh that, that allowing the Microsoft Power Automate to uh, enable to capture the detailed step of the uh, task performed by the employee, by the user, whether it's a, a independent task or basically it's a task that requires collaboration in between multiple users. So what does it mean is that it can basically is basically a technology that it can it can uh, record or to, to capture the every single details of how the user getting one task done like, like for example uh where the user getting the data from what the what the user need to do like for example logging into the system to go to which interface and to start keying the key in the information or the data into the system and to save the record and then to generate the, the, the final report by the end of the day. Basically, what this is what the task mining do in like capturing all the tasks, it getting one specific task that, that it can record, and then it can pass it to the uh, uh the RPA, RPA specialist to analyze and to create the automation for that particular process. Okay, and the next one, which is about the AI or ML, which referring to artificial intelligence and uh, machine learning capability. So we are talking about sometimes, I mean, we, we know that this is a very powerful uh, capability that is, is already widely available, but a lot of times they do not know how to use this or incorporate this into their organization. So basically, uh, Microsoft Power Automate have this capability that to incorporate the artificial intelligence or machine learning into your business processes that basically you can use uh utilize whatever existing model that has been created by Microsoft or you can use you can create your own uh uh AI or the machine learning model that can help to understand and process text like for example handwritten text that yeah, how how does a uh, the model able to recognize the word and try translate it into something usable 
okay and we're talking about process text uh process uh, document the object in image or to to create a model that will be able to predict uh, the outcome and also to uh, analyze your customer sentiments so basically this is something that we can i mean like the power to be able to create i mean help to create a model that to use in the analysis all right and of course in power automate basically they have uh, something called attended flow or unattended flow they basically attended flow which means uh something that uh, is manually triggered by the user as and when the user required the automation to do something for them okay that is something that manually triggered by a uh, user and for attended flow basically it required the the windows to be I mean, like pc to be open the window to be active to, to the user to log into the system before the automate automation can start to run whereas for unattended flow it is basically something that it can run automatically it can run it can trigger automatically based on a uh, certain a specific event that you design uh, for example incoming mail or a new file has been created and etc etc and then whenever this happen that means it triggered the unattended flow to run automatically even without the user logging into the pc that it was still able to run so i mean like microsoft power to make they have this uh, attended flow and unattended flow and of course uh, like i mentioned just now it supports a wide range of connector that is basically available i mean like the connector which is connected to connect into a third party solution all right and microsoft already have a plenty of pre-built integration with all the popular applications okay so we should for for this one you have no doubt that it can integrate with most of the microsoft solution like for example for example microsoft 365 that you can work with uh, excel word powerpoint or anything or power bi power apps sharepoint the dynamic 365 salesforce and etc etc and there are many more which already has tribute the by microsoft but of course in this one there are basically uh if you notice that there's basically two types of connector that is available there is something called a standard standard connector which basically a connector that that is come free they do not need to pay to do and the other one which is premium which which means uh the connector is a premium connector that basically required uh to subscribe to use the connector all right this means that the connector that you choose is i mean like you can basically pick and choose uh the connector that is required by your organization and to i mean to to, to have a subscription on that particular uh, connector only okay so this is the case is about the connector that you have a standard connector and they have a premium connector that required uh, to subscribe to it okay and some of the power automate common use uh common use cases okay something that i mean uh like for example the first very common use cases is about the notification and approval workflow like for example some of the uh, business processes that require multiple level of approval like in uh purchase requests finance document approval the leave leave request etc etc that required multiple approvals that basically we can use power automate to create an uh, automation in this okay and data synchronization it is about we can utilize power automate to maintain data consistency and accuracy across multiple uh multiple systems seamlessly between there are some business processes that need to uh i mean uh, synchronize the data from multiple systems whereas when we utilize power to make we can ensure that the data synchronization is always in a consistent manner and always uh reliable and accurate okay and robot basically i mean like the power to make basically can do this job 
at a very high level of accuracy compared to human performing these tasks. Okay. And the third one, we can, can also rely on uh, how to make it document generation. Like, for example, creating, formatting, uh, or give distribu distribution of the various type of uh, document. Like, for example, we're talking about report, okay? Generation of report, formatting of report, and invoices, contract, letter, and etc., etc. Uh, any kind of a document that you need, that it is basically possible to uh, generate the document with Power Automate. Okay, and sometimes uh, we were talking about report. Sometimes that uh, for the person who basically are uh, responsible in uh, generate report, sometimes they need to require they are, they are required to go into multiple system. Okay, to go to multiple system to download the the data from it. Okay, from uh, me to log into the system, download the report, and then it's also to combine the multiple report into one final report. That basically means that it works, it sounds very easy, but sometimes this is a very tedious but a task that required to, to run on a frequently. Okay. And the next one is about the social media automation. Okay. And I mean, like, no doubt that our current work currently are highly active in social media. And a lot of uh, organizations, a lot of businesses also are uh, putting a lot of focus into social media. All right. It's a platform that we, we uh, highly utilize nowadays. And we can also utilize the all automate it to create some uh, automation, like, for example, uh, related to social media management as well. Like, for example, uh, posting content, respond to message, respond to comment, and also doing the data get gathering and to monitor uh, monitor the social media activities. Like for example, if uh, uh, you were to monitor certain hashtag about your product, and if it detect that, the automation detect that, it can automatically uh, gather the information or gather the data and to insert into your database. Okay. So this is basically something that we can utilize. Uh, we can utilize it to do as well. And about data collection, beside beside the collection data collection in the uh, social media, it can also uh, collect data in other manner. Like for example, uh, it can gather information from website, uh, from a database, from document. Uh, from uh, email or from a specific uh, or from specific uh, application itself. All right. So basically, uh, you can also like create some some uh, syntax that you basically can detect and collect the data that match a specific uh, format. Okay. And the other thing is also about moving files. Okay, moving files from one location. To the other location automatically okay when an event figure or basically on a schedule basis and for this kind of a uh, business processes that will be particularly useful when there are business processes that require to move plenty of files from one place to the other on a regular basis so instead of uh, getting human to do that we can basically actually create an automation with all to make to do this task for human on behalf of human okay and the next one uh sometimes when we talk about how automate some people might be confused that they are people talking about desktop flow and cloud flow that basically i mean it's still uh, it's still something from my uh, power automate but what are the difference Okay, so basically, here I'm going to explain a little bit about the differences that for desktop flow, it is basically a uh, desktop base, which means it basically is an application that required to install at your workstation before you can basically start a desktop flow. All right, and it basically have a node, there is no workflow, workflow template 
which means there is uh, no ready-made template available. And if you have to build an automation for different different processes, for every processes that you will need to start from scratch, you basically start from zero. But for desktop flow, there is a function called web and desktop recorder are available, which means that for the action that you are you are inter I mean like interact with uh, some application or anything, basically you can utilize this web on desktop recorder. Web which means I mean like something you do at the website and desktop something you do with the, your desktop application. That basically once it recorded, it can automatically translate all the step into the action step inside the workflow uh, inside the uh, application in Power Automate. I mean. And there are preview action are available. Preview action, which means uh some some action that are supporting the create creating the automation. And for desktop flow, there is no automatic uh flow trigger. Which means for desktop flow, that desktop flow itself it is not able to trigger the automation automatically. It is basically need to trigger by the human itself, by the user itself or it required the cloud flow to trigger the desktop flow between they required something that some event trigger that to start the desktop flow which means you need to combine in between uh, desktop flow and cloud flow but for desktop flow it is basically a more powerful tools for a complex task uh, complex task which means uh, uh, required to go into multiple uh, application to multiple page or yeah, involve multiple step that complex step in getting the, the business process done all right so if you were to do that desktop flow will be a better uh, one in, in creating the automation whereas for uh, cloud auto uh, cloud flow it is basically cloud based that uh, it is pre-programmed and there are a lot of uh, plenty of pre-programmed workflow templates which is already available okay but for this one uh cloud flow there is no web or desktop recorder that yeah, we cannot write, record your task in getting uh, a specific process done and there are no preview action unlike the desktop flow and but for cloud flow the good thing is that i mean like it can automatically uh, trigger the flow, which means it can be based on event or based on a specific uh, time schedule that it can automatically start the uh, automation. And for Cloudflow, it's better for, it's better suit for cloud-based application, which means you are creating uh, the automation in between clouds, cloud-based solution. So this is uh, what Cloudflow and the desktop flow is different in terms of the architecture and what are the focus is about. So basically, the desktop flow is to deal with whatever application that you have in the desktop that it doesn't have a connector. Then basically, you will require to use desktop flow. Whereas cloud flow, that is basically something that uh, create a much more simple workflow, but uh, and basically integrate with all the cloud-based applications. Okay, so of course, uh, later on, I uh, mean, uh, in the next section, I will be able, uh, I will show you the demo of uh, what's the difference in between desktop flow and cloud flow. Okay, so uh, we are a little bit short of time, so uh, so I will not proceed with the the break, and I will move on with the demo instead so i have more time to show the de demo all right so in this demo basically i'm um, is focusing into desktop flow all right so basically it is talking about uh i'm, I'm creating a scenario that uh for invoice processing okay so for invoice processing that uh we have a data in a basic invoice data in the excel excel file and for every entry that we are required to key in the information into the finance system. Here, I mean, I'm using the, the demo application called Cantoso Invoicing. So basically, I will do, I mean, to extract data from Excel file and to key in 
the invoice information into the uh, finance system. And when I create a new record, there will be an invoice ID generated by the system and I'm required to uh, extract the, the invoice ID and put it back into the Excel file. Okay, so in this process, for every single entry, Excel entry, for every single row of data, it basically required 11 to 15 steps to manually insert one row of data to the application and to Excel. So between the 11 and 15 step is basically including the step of like, I open the first time, open up the application, and then I want to copy the, the information from Excel, and then go into the console invoicing to insert the information, and then to save the entry, and then to extract the uh, invoice, the data, the invoice ID, and to place it back into, uh, put it back, entry back into the Excel file. So basically for every single step, it requires 11 to 15 steps. Okay. What if there are 100 row of data to key in on a daily basis? Here, I mean like in my demo, I'm talking about this, I'm creating just a scenario of five entry, five row of data. But putting in a scenario that you think that if, what if there are 100 row of data to key in daily? How much time do you require to handle this process? One hour, two hour, or maybe half a day just to en enter this data into the system. Okay, so here I'm going to demonstrate of how I can create an automation. Okay, how the aut automation can make things simple with Power Automate in getting the things done. All right. Okay, give me a thumbs up if you can see my uh, Power Automate. Uh, give me a thumbs up so that I know that you can see what you're supposed to see. Yeah, but see a lot of thumbs up. So I assume that everyone can see. So basically, this is a Power Automate desktop. All right. Basically, like, like I see just now, the desktop flow that I will require to install the application in uh, my workstation, my PC. So this is how it looks like. Okay. So whenever I, I, I open up the Power Automate, this is what I can see. This is how it looks and feel like. And come back into the demo, the solution. Okay. So when I come in, uh, one moment it is loading. So here in the Power Automate, that basically you can see this. Yeah. So basically, this is the uh, how does the flow looks like. Okay. So basically, <clears throat> I'm talking about so from running the application, like for example, running the Cantoso invoicing application and then to open up the Excel and then to read the data from Excel and then to set the variable and to, let's say for example, okay, for example, I were to manually, okay, I were to manually run the application, okay, I would manually create the entry. So every time, I mean like, first I need to start up my, uh, this kind of invoicing, I need to go into the invoice, okay? I need to cl click this button to create a new record, do the data entry, copy and paste, copy and paste, and then to save, and then to copy this ID and write back into the Excel file, okay? So like I said, in this step, for every, every row of data, they require 11 to 15 steps in getting the task done. Okay, so here I'm going to demonstrate to you, okay, by using this one, how things are running automatically in, from, I mean, getting the data from Excel to insert into the uh, Katoso invoicing and to, to get the invoice ID to put it back into the Excel file. 
All right. So I'm now begin to run the automation. Okay, then you can see that basically you're already starting to uh, run the automation that basically you can see that my hand is up here. I'm not touching anything. And all the action in the data creation is running automatically. All right, my hand is up here. I'm not touching anything. I'm not touching the keyboard. Okay, so basically it start reading the information and to start create the, the, the new entry. Okay, you can see that how the Power Automate can design the, the robot in a way that basically it start creating the entry by itself based on the data given. All right. So for five entry for for copy and paste, I will assume that you will, you will probably need in a very fast way. You need to, uh one minute per entry. We're talking about let's say five minutes in completing this task. Okay, but here we can basically save almost like half the time. So you can see that. Here you can see that how the robot is doing the task because you see that there is a specific rules or specific pattern in getting the task done. All right. Every time I need to create a new entry, I always need to go into the uh, top left bot button to create a new invoice or new entry so that I can insert a new uh, data and everything. And then I need to save after every and uh, data is insert and all these things. So we can see that how the robot is doing the work. It's running. Yeah, now it is almost at the last entry already. Once it is done, so once it is done, it will automatically close the application as well. And yeah, so that is the end of the the, the process. Whereby end of it, it will basically close the Excel and close the application. But what it has done is basically already enter the five five row of data into the Cantoso invoicing application, and all of this. I just need to design the flow once. All right. As long as I follow this step, you can get the task done. And you can, you can like, for example, if there is a talking about hundred of a, a hundred row of data that need to be processed on a daily basis, and you require two to three manpower and half a day to get this task done. And with this, uh, Power Automate, uh, Power Automate, basically you can create a robot and to execute the same task by using one single robot and get it done in less than, less than half a day, for example. All right. But in general, I'm talking about basically this is the, the, the step that basically how the Power Automate can do the job for us in a desktop flow for, for, for this one. We are talking about desktop flow and how is this possible? Okay, come back to the slide. Okay, so just now we are talking. I mean, like I've run through a, a demo about how the Power Automate can do the invoice processing to execute this step in a very fast and in a very accurate manner and in, in a very consistent manner as well. Okay. The second one, the second part of the the demo which is about the focusing in cloud flow. And in this scenario, I basically create a, I mean like the, have a scenario of email automation. All right. So in this scenario, it's basically, uh, <clears throat> it is for the user to like, uh, 
the, the user that is processing invoice, for example, that uh, customer, whether internally or externally, that will be sending the invoice in the PDF format, okay, in the PDF in the PDF as a, as an attachment to that particular user, okay, and if the email, I mean, like in the in the demo, it basically it detect every single incoming email that if the email have the I mean like the subject have the keyword invoice as long as it has the word invoice then it will download the attachment to a specific drive all right and the second step is to mark the email as read and if the email coming in it is without the keyword invoice then it will basically ignore the email okay if you are the you are the key person who are handling this process and you are away from vacation for a week and there are hundred or a few hundred emails that go to you in this one week period all right are you going to browse through every single email and to check if there is any attachment to download do you think i mean like this this way of working is efficient or that could be a new way in handling this kind of uh hurdle all right so here i can basically i mean like i'm going to show you the demo that uh create the uh, email automation with power automate uh, basically to detect new email and to download uh the attachment all right so here you can see that i'm using my browser and i'm basically in the power microsoft power automate web-based application in the i mean like in the it's a it's a web-based application that when i come into here that you can basically i mean like everything is done uh in the on web basis which, which means i need to uh, need to utilize a web browser to go into the power automate page to log in my my users so that i can access i can start creating a cloud flow all right now of course i mean coming back into the scenario that we can see that this is i mean like it looks very simple okay and I, if, if i were to extend a little bit then you can see that basically uh this is the condition that has been set in the uh email automation which means this automation it will read my mailbox all right and it will detect every new incoming uh email all right so when there is a new email that you basically go through this uh process in checking the attachment all right of course for my email i want to show a little bit more all right that for this email that basically i can set uh what folder to monitor if the email should include the attachment before it is start processing and then like you see here i can do a subject filter a subject filter that can be very specific to us uh, the word that for like for example you are dealing with a particular project that every email incoming they will have a title of that particular project or if there is a new invoice coming that people will be labeled invoice if the email is coming in this manner then yes you can basically apply the filter that every email come come into your mailbox or come into my mailbox you will first need to i mean go through the filter whether this email subject in i mean include the this particular word or before it start the automation so here i would admit that i would include this filter and if the email coming have an attachment and the subject have the word invoice then it will go through the next uh, uh, process, which is to check whether the attachment contain dot PDF or not. Which means I require this automation to download only PDF file and not any other attachment that coming along from the email. I only want the PDF file, and if yes, the the, the attachment is a is a PDF file, then I will create it into my uh one drive for example okay so right now <clears throat> i can see that may come into my flow that you can see that this uh is automated okay 
So between I already set it as long as there is a new incoming email, it will automatically run this uh uh workflow because here I'm basically using the connector that using uh to connect to my mailbox okay through the Microsoft 365 connector okay so let's come into my mailbox okay so uh draft so I basically drafted uh three different email that to send to myself so okay for example if you see this email okay uh i have the attachment i have the sender but you can see that for this for this uh email the subject don't have the word the keyword invoice so if i were to send this email okay then i need to show you my onedrive as well so this is my onedrive okay so i can see that if the in email incoming that it will not download the attachment okay so email incoming yeah email incoming but uh it is not processed okay so let me send the another email for this one and okay for this email that i have the attachment and have a keyword invoice in the subject okay and i send it okay so when i go into my power automate okay that is it incoming yeah the email is really incoming so you should already start processing and let's see does it come into my one drive or not yeah you can see that the automation has run successfully okay okay so here let me refresh we can see that this process it just completed 35 seconds ago that it took two seconds to execute and in my one drive i can see that it, it already downloaded the the pdf invoice for me okay and of course if i were to send i mean like as i went when there is email coming in then it will automatically it will automatically it will automatically download the attachment based on the scenario i mean based on the set of rules that i, I have applied to that particular automation so that it can work according to the rules okay so this is about i mean this is what uh, i call it cloud flow that basically uh depending on the connector to connect to the services like here for example it, it is connected to my uh connected to my mailbox via the microsoft 365 connectors okay put the email automation of how is it possible in create a uh, automation for your email and there are much more activity that i can include to this one but it is depending on what do you want the robot to do for you and there are many other possibilities that we can create with uh, this uh, uh, power automate all right and right now we are almost at the end of the the session so uh, let me do some wrap up and in this one and a half hour very short period of time basically you have learned that what microsoft power make, power automate is about and how is it possible to speed up the entire enterprise processes all right how to transfer the data in between application and the excel i mean like between excel and the also invoicing and how the email automation is possible all right and how rpa can be used for enormous uh, workload how rpa can handle all these kind of uh, 
rep- manual repetitive and voluminous, but I mean high in volume uh, task. And how robot can o- can do almost everything that me as a human do on my machine on my PC, and there are many more things. Okay, and of course, if you are interested to know more or you would like to discover more about, I mean, more opportunity about uh, RPA, we, Siberian, is here to help. And we have a RPA discovery workshop that's specifically that's spe- specially designed for companies who are keen to explore the RPA possibilities. All right. It is basically a half-day workshop that we are going to help your organization in discovering what are the processes that is a great candidate for automation. And from the workshop, it gives your organization uh, an opportunity to obtain a holistic view of your current uh, uh, process or operational processes, and you get a better understanding of your workflow and to identify where are the possible bottlenecks. And then we can also build a RPA proof of concept for your, I mean, proof of value for your organization to better understand the value and the benefit from the RPA solution. And we are also, we are also, uh, we can produce the insightful data to justify the ROI and the RPA, uh, from the RPA adoption. And if your RPA, if your organization already adopted RPA, we can also be there to quickly help you to validate your automation process maturity and also the governance control as well. And you will be getting our professional advice and recommendation from us. And guess what? This workshop, you can basically get all this benefit free of charge. All right? It is basically free of charge. You do not do not need to pay anything to get all these things all these things done. All right. And if your organization have already obtained some knowledge about RPA and you also your organization already identified uh some use cases that you want to move on to a uh, uh next step, then we can be there to help the company to build the proof of concept as well. Letting your organization see the benefit of the RPA in the process optimization. At the same time, also letting your organization uh, to see the benefit of automating the processes and also the efficiency that comes along with the adoption and the implementation of the robotic process automation. And it also provide an overview of the entire process and the deliverable as well. All right. So, any questions so far? Yeah, is the I I get quite a number of questions, and I will just pick a few. Uh, I got it. Questions about is the desktop flow and cloud flow are for power automate is specific, or it is some other RPA. So for uh, this question, basically, Power Automate is available in the desktop flow and the cloud flow, and both serve a different purpose. Like I said, desktop flow is actually uh, meant for uh, business processes that is more complicated, then it is more recommended to use the desktop flow. For cloud flow, it is meant for something which is more uh, simple, that like for example, create an email email automation just to download uh the, the an attachment, then we can utilize uh cloud flow because it can be on it can be triggered on an event basis. Like for example, incoming email there, it will start running. But for desktop flow, that can run automatically. But we can we can have desktop flow and cloud flow to work together as well. This is something that is, I mean, like the power, Microsoft Power Automate can do as well. So, yeah. And I got another question. Can Power Automate work with SAP application? Yes, it can work with the SAP application, not a problem. There are uh, quite a number of uh, uh, customers that basically incorporate Power Automate with the SAP application as well. So for that, that is not a problem. 
Okay, and I will pick one last question. Okay. Is Power Automate a paid subscription software? Is it only for businesses? Well, uh, if I mean like your organization already have a Microsoft 365, are uh, using 365, then I, it should be included within it. But there are uh, some uh, connector in specifically that require a uh, uh, subscription, which means some, there are some, I mean like premium, premium function that you need to pay with it. So uh, this one, you probably need to, I mean, uh, you verify with your, uh, I mean, organization IT or anything, whether uh, does the user come with the, I mean, like, I mean, have the access to the power automate or not. But generally, I think it should be included. But this is, this should be something that uh, you can uh, further verify with your uh, uh, organization IT department that whether I mean, are they given permission. Or maybe you can request for that if you were to start with the automation as well. All right. Um, there are many more questions that I don't think I have enough time to handle right here. But allow me to to go through this one, and I can come back. I mean, I can personally like reach out to you and to answer your question one by one. Okay. Yeah. Also, I have the last question, how to join the half, uh, free half day training. So basically, it's, uh, I think you're referring to the workshop. Basically, it's not a, it's not a training, but it's a workshop that for us, Simon, to work together with your team uh, or your organization, it identified the potential, the RPA potential. Okay. And of course, that uh, if you want to know more about the RP Discovery Workshop, then basically you can uh, visit our, web, uh, our website, www.cyber.com slash consulting. I mean, like in the consulting part, yeah, you can search for the RPA Discovery Workshop or easier that you can basically scan this QR code and directly access to that particular uh, page, which is, I mean, you have more information about the RPA Discovery Workshop. Or, if you want to know more about the uh the RPA discovery shop or if there is any more questions that you want to reach out to me or you want to know more about the RPA discovery workshop, you are more than welcome to contact me directly at my link at cybin.com. This is my email that you can reach out to me so we can we can uh further discuss about your interest in the, the proof of concept or the RPA discovery workshop. Okay. And once again, uh, we are at the end of our workshop. And thank you very much. Thank you very much for your time and uh, participation. That I, I received a lot of uh, questions and allowed me to go through the questions and respond to you guys uh, one by one. And uh, again, I hope that this is something that is a very informative for you and your organization and you there is something for you to take away from this session. And once again, if you have uh, interest in discover more about the RPE Discovery Workshop, please contact me or to contact uh, us, I mean like at the sales at cyber.com. Either one is fine. All right. Once again, thank you very much. And have a nice day ahead. Bye-bye.